Hello, hello, hello. It is I, Ilan Moore, and I'm back with you with another Focus On video for Pioneers of Pagonia. And one of the things that I love about this game is the gorgeous terrain, the uh, lovely islands that you're witnessing right now. Well done, developers of Pioneers of Pagonia. It looks absolutely gorgeous. However, these terrains can be a little bit confusing and they're important because you can do certain things on some terrains and not on others. So today we're gonna to focus on the terrains. This is a bit of a foundational video. I've spent a lot of time researching uh, and uh, testing, so I'll bring you the benefit of my knowledge. But uh, yeah, this is important because the next focus on video that we're gonna do is the farms. We're gonna get onto that. I've heard you loud and clear. We wanna get onto the farms and, uh, and terrain is actually really important for the different kinds of farms and crops. So we'll do this and then we'll be ready to focus on the farms and engineer a great solution. All right, let's have a look at the different terrain types and the map. Now for most of us, when we start the game, we're going to be confronted with uh, these terrain types. Some beach, uh, some grass, and some forest if we're lucky. So let's have a look at those. These are the textures uh, that they use, and these are the colours that you see them as on the mini-map. And so we'll be able to identify these uh, more easily. Notice that there's a transition, and uh, that transition, some, that's how they adjusted the forest uh, and allowed fertile f fields to be closer to the forest was by allowing them to be on the transition. So the transition is important, but it's not a terrain type by itself. With that in mind, let's put those colors from the map onto our uh, texture map so we can uh, spot the difference there. And uh, while we're there, grassland obviously is important because you can plant almost any crop on grassland. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that forest, if you plant trees on grassland, it'll change the terrain type to forest. Uh, and, um, and then when you chop the trees down, it'll actually change back to its original texture. Now there are four different types of grassland and we should look at those. Now the way you can tell what type of grassland is which is by using the field. So there we've got uh, just regular grassland which has some crops, fertile grassland, sandy grassland and dusty grassland. So you can just uh, hover over and in the right hand corner there it'll tell you about the terrain type. Now as you can see these textures are quite similar and they're also very very similar on the mini-map. Um, you can see here uh, on the mini-map where these uh, particular textures are uh, but it's much easier actually to see that's why you need the fields uh, so you can actually see what types they are. So here's the grassland the textures are quite different. You see the fertile, you can tell when you're actually looking at them uh, the sandy type here uh, with the little pink flowers and then the dusty type with more brown and rock. So moving on from grassland, we come to the mossy type and the mossy type is good for cabbages. You can plant fields here uh, and it looks very swampy, but it's actually mossy uh, and it often surrounds this swamp area, which is forbidden. Now we have to guess that this is swamp because it doesn't say uh, that it is um, because we can't build anything or we can't put a field there, uh, but this is the swamp. And if we look on the map, you can see the difference here you've got the uh, the mossy, which is this kind of snotty green on the mini-map. And then you've got the swamp, which is the brown. And there's this transition color, uh, but that's actually still mossy, the transition color. Uh, it's just the transition between the, the snotty green and the brown. And just important to note that although you can build buildings on the mossy, you can't do so in the swamp. And it's sometimes difficult to tell the difference between these two. And that's where the mini-map is useful. And so here on our cheat sheet, the uh, the mossy there and the swamp, the swamp and the brown, obviously the mossy with the, uh, the snot green. And you might think that these look very, very similar, and they do uh, with the with the other grasses. And so uh, they almost look like the same color until you put them next to each other, and then you can just see a difference. But if there's one thing I would request from the pines of Pionia people, it is that they differentiate differentiate these colors a little bit more. All right, moving on. One thing that I should mention about swamp though is that perhaps counterintuitively, you can build roads on your swamp, so they're not a barrier to your travel uh, that you might expect. 
Alright, the next two terrains that we turn our attention to look quite similar on the map and the first one is this lake shore and the second is this scree and you can't build a field in either of them so we're just guessing what these are uh, based on their position uh, but you can uh, actually uh, build buildings on the uh, on the lake shore you cannot on the scree and the scree has this uh, more rocks in it that's how you can tell the difference uh, the lake shore is always next to the lake uh, which is important obviously and the lake is water you can't build anything there but i'm going to guess that coming up soon fishermen will take advantage of the lake and the lake shore so looking forward to that let's look at the textures and we've got another kind of greeny brown for the lake shore, but fortunately this one's, this one's easier to spot because it's always next to the blue of the water. Uh, and then the scree is this grey colour, uh, and you'll see it around the mountains. Speaking of mountains, there's an interesting mecha mechanic whereby most buildings you can't build on scree, uh, and also you can't build on this flat mountain plateau a texture however your mines can be built on there so uh, that's a useful place just to put your mines and obviously that's uh, intuitive that you'd be able to mine on the rock uh, however uh, the cliffs and the mountains uh, and so that's these cliffs especially around here with the uh, with the water uh, and then the mountains which uh, which are taller and don't have the grassy parts to them uh, those are impassable you can't uh, you can't get put a mine on there or roads roads again can go on the uh, on the plateau the stony plateau uh, when we look at the map you see the stony plateau is this light gray whereas the uh, the cliffs and the uh, the mountains and we'll see it over here the mountains themselves are this uh, this kind of again a dark green it's like they took the camouflage greens and just threw them all together uh, but it's this camouflage green uh, and showing a little bit of the uh, of the height map with the lighter texture there uh, these are impassable these will stop your roads so they're good uh, good thing to be planning around for example this mountain range right here uh, you can't get roads to this spot so you have to go all the way around and uh, knowing that you can plan a little better so on the map cliff plateau and scree look quite different but on the mini map they look very similar these two greys but uh, in all honesty they act very similar as well so no big deal there the cliff and the mountain look very similar on the uh, on the map and also on the mini map but uh, they act in different ways the cliff is normally next to the ocean whereas mountains tend to be uh, just on the land so that's that right on to the last three textures so first of all we've got this step which tends to be in the middle of sandy ground but is too sandy to plant um, crops and you can tell because it's got these same yellow and red um, sorry pink and red flowers uh, and butterflies but too much sand to be able to plant uh, and then you've got this stony desert terrain uh, which tends to be in the middle of dusty areas but again it's too dusty not enough dirt in, in order to be able to build uh, and finally and if we look at these on our terrain cheat sheet, uh, we've got the stony desert there with mostly mud but with some stones in. You've got the step with the, uh, the grass and the sand and the flowers. And then you've got this dry dirt texture. And I haven't been able to find this anywhere on the map. So I wonder if it was ever actually implemented or uh, maybe I'm just missing it. If you can find it, please do let me know. Now's a really good time to tell you that where I found these was on the uh, uh, Pinterest and that led me to Art Station and it was Olha Osiopenko who uh, who put these uh, online for us and so thank you very much uh, to her I'll put a link in the description to her site which has these pictures and some lovely textures from Pioneers of Pagonia with these materials so hopefully this focus on the trains has helped you to uh, come to grips with the map and this uh, this splurge of greens and browns. Hopefully they mean a little bit more to you and help you to uh, to prepare and to plan your maps a little bit further and to enjoy the game more. Uh, and of course the maps themselves are gorgeous and it's lovely to be able to understand them a little bit better. Uh, in our focus on series we will touch on every building on the roads, uh, where you're allowed to build, where you can't, which buildings can go 
aware, so please do follow that. This is more of a foundational video for that. Just before we come to an end, I did want to uh, just have a little a brainstorm with you. Uh, I'd love to see in the comments any sort of um, restrictions or special buildings you would like to see on the uh, you know related to the textures. So just like the uh, the mines can be built on scree or on the rocky plateau, are there different uh, buildings that you think should only be able to be built in particular places? For for example, wouldn't it be cool to have particular tree types that could only be planted in the swamp and then uh, the foresters would need to uh, field those and you could only get them if you planted them in the swamp. I imagine in the future updates where you're allowed to do underground mining that the, uh, the mountains will become more of a feature and I'm looking forward to that. We already know that the forest terrain is necessary for animals to spawn and uh, I'm looking forward to looking more into that when we get to the hunter. Wouldn't it be fantastic if you could uh, sink a well into a stony desert and cause an oasis to form and actually change the terrain making more of it profitable for farming. And if we ever get domesticated animals like cattle and horses, then grassland and having to have lots of land available for them to roam would be a great addition. But for now, we're going to leave these pioneers to enjoy their wonderful terrain, their lovely islands. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to download the uh, cheat sheet from either Discord or the Reddit, uh, Pioneers of Pagonia Reddit. And in the meantime, have a lovely day. Bye bye.